Hi, I am Rajesh Kannan. I have, I have been working with Bistock 360 for more than three years as a software engineer. Initially, I worked with Bistock 360 product team. Now I am working with the Service Plus 360 team. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Steve Chan. He has over 15 years of experience as a technical lead developer, application architect, and consultant specializing in custom applications, enterprise application integration, web services, and Windows Azure. He is a very active in the Bistock and Azure, Azure community as a blogger, VK author, and forum moderator, writer, and public speaker in the Netherlands and Europe. He is a Microsoft MVP for the past seven years. And once again, a warm welcome to Mr. Steve Jan for presenting session about empowering the business using Logic Apps. Thank you. OK, so if you wonder, I'm not this guy, neither am I three years old. I'm going to talk about Logic Apps, but I'm going to do more a uh, end user and consumer perspective than more from a feature thing. And before I start, you might wonder, why is he wearing that hideous shirt? Is there anyone who likes a shirt, by the way? You raise your hand. Well, that's, of course, the Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So I lost a bet, so just so you know why that is. And that's because, uh, you know, Sandro and I uh, had a bet around the European Championships last year. I lost it, so I had to wear the guy, this guy. I don't like the guy at all. But yeah. So I took his shirt, you know, when he comes on the pitch, he's really like, okay, let's get this thing going. Same as I'm going for this presentation right now. Although I'm not gonna do this. He's like that when he comes onto the pitch and then he usually has something done like this. And that's what he, he's very, you know, he's very sportive guy. He usually does not that stuff, but hey, did, you know, these pictures prove to himself. And then it's like, hey, right? <laughs> he still lives. So there you go. So yeah, they won the, um, the championship. Him and another guy, which I will not mention. But okay, let's go forward. Let's go to some serious stuff. Let's get into to the journey in, of, of Logic App. So you're all Bistow guys. Who's not a Bistow guy here? So anyone could. But we're not going to talk about Bistow. It's kind of the journey. This, this, this tool or the product was out there two, in year 2000. It's now 70 years old. Same amount of time as you work for Microsoft, although you didn't do 70 years of, of Bistock support, but uh, it's there for a long time. Then we had Azure 2008, I was there at PDC, that was launched, and of course you would think, okay, then they're probably on board some of that integration capability in Azure. It took a bit of a time, so they had the uh, Service Bus AEDI Labs type of thing set up first before they got into Bistock Services, which is when GA a couple of years ago, kind of the predecessor of Logic Apps. Then, of course, we've got Logic App. This is kind of the old logo, and then we've got this. Most of you are probably now familiar with what Logic Apps is, so I won't go into that. What I do go into is, is the kind of story from the um, Bistock services and Logic Apps, because four years ago, or yeah, about three years ago, I went to Australia, so I went toward the road and talked about Bistock services. I thought it was great in some aspect, and talked even at Integrate two years ago about the manageability of um, the Bistock services. Although the sentiment back then was a bit different, there weren't that much use cases or people that said, oh yeah, I'm already doing a project with it. Now, three years later, I'm kind of doing the thing all over again, although on this time I'm talking about Logic Apps. So I went to Australia in the beginning of the year, now I'm here in Europe, and probably the end of the year talk about Logic Apps in North America. So I'm touring the world again, but now I'm talking about Logic Apps, which is great because it falls into what's been known as digital transformation. So I don't know, Martin, if you got your um, bottles lined up, because I'm going to mention a few times, but this is where we are right now. It's digitized, digitalization, and now, of course, businesses are moving their stuff into the cloud and, and digitalize it, and that's, that's what they label or call it digital transformation. So that's two, Martin. Right, I got a business case around this, which involves the Logic App as a part of a solution. So this company, which does environmental control in non residential building and in greenhouses. So if you know Holland, we have a lot of greenhouses where we do tomatoes and kind of other stuff where we grow. And this company wanted to do, okay, we're going to move our IT to the cloud. And that's the kind of thing what you do in, you read some of the reports that, hey, digital transformation, oh yeah, let's move to the cloud. Free. 
So it was like Microsoft on less, minimal code, so no code at all, preferably, and having a unified IT landscape. So that's why they chose Azure. And what they did is that they had services and products around, you know, having your environmental control set up within an environment like a non-residential building or a greenhouse. And what they wanted to do is, what, what they had is like they had their um, training materials and they did on-prem training. So this is a, a, a global company, so they flew people in and they had classroom training at their facility, at the academy. But they wanted to move away from that model because it was costly, not environmental friendly, and they want to kind of harness all that information and knowledge about their services and products into learning modules, um, course where you, you think you're familiar with Pluralsight and edX. Sometimes that stuff, harness that and bring that on into a SaaS solution which is called Learning and Management System 365. And have that information when you know, they onboard their partners and customers, learning all their stuff, all their product and, and service knowledge, and get the status of that information back into their CRM online system. So they went completely in the cloud, so this is kind of a picture of it. So the LMS 365 and API were kind of subscribed uh, through webhook mechanism, followed by the service bus to kind of do some persistence on the, mes uh, the messages we get. We didn't want to have the complete message, we just want to have the uh, login name, which was an, uh, an email. We wanted to have the status of the course, the course name itself, and another parameter, um, and that's about it. So we pushed that to a Logic App, and the Logic App was able, using that CRM uh, dynamic uh, adapter, to pump that data into CRM, which basically gave the academy, and that's kind of the business value they got out of it, is that they could create a dashboard telling them which customer or which partner followed what course or didn't follow the course. They could do marketing automation. There's plenty of opportunities they could have because now they had a complete data set. And Logic App is just part of that solution. And it really empowered their business. That's why I put that in the title. Really important, uh, empowered their business to have a good overview of their data. Then there's some other cases I've been told to. So this is a buddy of mine, Mick Bedren, up in uh, Australia, which started doing a startup. So it's called My Tailored Energy for your home. So he's got an appliance application. And he runs a logic apps in the background to just get a lot of feed off of utility, utility companies to get you know, the power in and see what the costs are. And, and the users that have that app can see, okay, which utility are going to take on on what kind of pricing plan. So it's just a consumer-based application where Logic App is doing something in the background to handle like a lot of incoming data of those utility companies to provide insights for the end user, which is the user at home, to see, okay, what's the best price plan for my consumption? So that's one example of where Logic Apps are being used. Compared to three years ago when I was running around the world talking about business services, there weren't so many use cases, but you know, these use cases just come to me. There, there are tons of them, and this was just one of them. Another one is Bistock 360. So I talked to Saravana as well. He said, okay, what are, you, are you using Logic Apps? He said, well, I am. In, in the background, I'm using it for my service bus 360. So some of the notification and notification channel, like what's being depicted here, service now, page duty, he's using that service. Again, utilizing Logic App in a total solution where you know, it fits in. So again, empowering his business. So I like views. So holistically, how do you look at Logic Apps? It's a part of a complete platform. So holistically speaking, you can integrate with all kinds of Azure services, which you've seen already a few examples of, like the previous um, presentation by Kent, some of the stuff that the product group did. So you can integrate with all types of Azure services. So it is a part of a complete solution in the platform. Instead of being a, a, solicit, uh, a, a monolithic type of solution you could buy or to license. So it's part of a, a bigger um, picture. It's kind of what's being called an iPad. So I just put the, um, the definition out here just to give you a sense of what's being labeled as an iPad. And if you look at Logic Apps, it's exactly what it is it's a true iPad service. Because you run it in the cloud, it's got a, a micro billing costing model, so it's pay as you go. You do all kinds of stuff in the cloud. You use the browser. You already saw that there's a connectivity with uh, uh, management using OMS. So it's completely in the cloud, multi tenant, elastic because of Azure. So that's what it is. Then, of course, within an iPad world, there's some buddies there too. 
There's Mule, Jitterbit, SnapLogic, some of the others. And you can back to differ, are they true iPaaS as well? Because some of them, you have to buy a license or call a representative to set some stuff up. It doesn't scale or anything. If you set up Logic Apps, it just runs for you. But it's not always the case when you look at some of the competitors. So, if you look at Gartner, this is kind of the, uh, the quadrant, uh, quadrant, and you don't see Microsoft as being a leader. So you see them up there, but you see some of the other ones. You, you could say, are they truly iPads or not? And why is it not a leader? If you look at some of the um, cons or things they say around Logic Apps, one of the things they say is there's no migration story for the BizTalk workloads, but then again, it's not the same as BizTalk. BizTalk is on-prem, pops up mechanism, while Logic Apps, as you know, is trigger event-based and then followed by a couple of actions. So it's similar, it's not the same. It's the offering, BizTalk is on-prem, Logic Apps in the cloud. Those are two different things. And if you wanna move your integration up to the cloud, you probably leverage more than just Logic Apps. So a little bit struggle a little bit with this comment on, on Logic Apps. The other one is functional depth. So as you see, the, the, the product group is running like Madman, cr cranking out a lot of features and capability into that service. And this is, called, of course, a momentum taken in time. And the other thing is it's based around connectivity instead of other types of things. And it's Microsoft-centric, but then again, it's a part of a complete platform, so what do you expect? Compared to some of the competitors, which are just a solistic product, which doesn't make really a part of a big platform at all. So it's kind of the differentiation I see here, and it's something I want to give you as well, if you look at the IPS space in general. So what's the platform today? What do you have? We have BizTalk Server, we have WCF. But then, of course, if you look at the cloud side, you got uh, Service Bus, you got API management, you got Logic Apps, you got Data Factory, you got Functions, and you got Storage, and you got an integration account, so for the B2B. So you've seen all some of this expect node, but we didn't see Data Factory, that's a little bit more than data platform, but it does have to do a little bit of our, uh, about integration. What I want to focus on, and what I've been talking for a while now, is the logic app thing. Now, you know what a logic app is, and I don't have to go in depth for it exactly. It's, it's based on events, triggers, followed by actions. Have you seen some good examples? of? I've got some examples, too, which I'll show you later. So I've done some research, because I was really interested, like, okay, I know all the features, I know there's a, a lot of good content out there, but what do people, or what do the experts actually think? So people that are in that Yammer channel, some of you probably are, who's in the Yammer channel for logic apps? So there's a quite a few. So I didn't do this randomly, so I did pick some of the people I know that are very uh, versatile in, in using this tooling and have done some projects uh, with customers. So who's done a project with the customer that went live with Logic Apps? All right, I do see some hands, so that's, that's good. So I asked them a couple of questions. So what's your view on the Logic App? Have you built it for customers or for learning purposes? So have you played around with it, basically? If you've done it for customers, what's their opinion? What's the developer experience? Because that's interesting too. And what do you think that the value actually would be for Logic App? So you've heard Microsoft saying, okay, it's very valuable, but what do the people in, you know, actually working with the technology globally think about this service? That's what's something I was interested in. So sitting on the bench and looking at these answers, I kind of fed that into a dashboard. So I used Logic App, fed all that details in, and as you can see in this dashboard, I've interviewed people in Australia, in Europe, and in the US, because that's kind of the hot spots of integration. And overall, the sentiment is positive. It's good or excellent. There's one or two people that are, have a little bit of strong opinion about it, a little bit more skeptic, but it's next to nothing. And if I had the, de uh, the information back then around BizTalk services, I probably had a little bit of a different story or picture than I have today. So the sentiment around um, Logic Apps is really great. Well, I can't show you or share all the quotes with you because that's pretty tedious, but there's a few out there. People think, hey, it's great. It's, it's building momentum, and that's what it does right now. And it's, it's continuously improved and innovative, and that's what you probably have seen today as well. 
Okay, the early release was a little bit, of, you know, people feel a little bit cumbersome. I, I got in the game a little later with two. Once I had that project, I really started going and investing really heavily into logic apps. Because of my previous experience with Bistock servers, I, I don't know, but it, it does, it, it did improve a lot, and that's some of the feeling that people had. There's some people, this is more like a, a, a skeptical one, or one that's saying, hey, you know, it's missing integration type uh, related um, capabilities compared to some of the competitors, like Mule and being depicted here. So, so this is someone who has a little bit of a different view on, on logic apps. So that's kind of what the, the view is on, on that service. And if we then look at the developer experience, so that's you guys working with this technology. So the developer experience is something that really matters because one of the things you really want is productivity. You want to crank out that solution fast instead of worrying about infrastructure and all that stuff. And that's what this service actually gives. The other thing is you want to have it deployed fast instead of, you know, you, you know the Bistock deployment frameworks and stuff, which takes some time. This just easily is deployed and it works. And it's pretty robust in ways of killabilities you've seen today that you can look into what happens within the flows and, and that kind of stuff that's being demoed today as well. So what's the sentiment around the developer experience then? What do these experts think about the developer experience? A lot of it have comments around, okay, it's browser-based and stuff and it's easy. And it also reflects, with, again, in this kind of dashboard again that is pretty positive, the sentiment around the developer experience. Which is another good sign also for businesses. If they want to onboard Microsoft or a partner building this solution, then it's important that the developer experience is good because then the productivity is high and then they get their solution pretty fast. So, what are some of the quotes? So, can't of course put them all out here. Um, it's pretty good, and the Visual Studio things are pretty nice as well. There will be uh, another session later on, some of the ALM aspects, also involving Visual Studio, I think, with uh, Joan. Sometimes people don't really like, you know, editing, going to the code behind, working with that, um, with that JSON. But it, oh, glitch. It, but it does deliver. A, your solution fast, especially if you work in a browser. That's what I usually do. So who with working with Logic App works in a browser? And who does it in Visual Studio? Okay, so there's a little bit of mix of hands, so that's kind of 50-50, I would say. Let's look further on. So what type of scenarios can you do? Let's, get, let's move over to the business side. So you've seen already an example with Lewis, but for instance, in, IoT, in industrial IoT, for in, with connected um, services everywhere, and you want to know if there's something failing, let's say go from predictive maintenance kind of thing, something starts failing or there's data being fed out or spit out that's saying, hey, there's something wrong with my device, let's say wind turbine, then you want to get that data somewhere in a system that could put out a notification to say, okay, you mechanic, you create kind of a work order, go up to that wind turbine and start fixing it. And that's something, if you look at a um, solution using this type of thing, and this is something I got from Elder, it's like this device to, device to cloud thing, is that what IoT Hub can do is push out some of the messages from those devices straight into the service bus. And then, hey, that's where we come in with Logic App, because we can pick up that message and put that right into CRM, leveraging that adapter. So it's kind of an interesting use case where IoT and there are going to be some IoT sessions later on, can hook up a few logic apps into some of those systems. Another would be cognitive services. So a message comes in, it's being detected on language detection, and then another record gets sent into a CRM system again, or gets a prediction out of it and creates an item somewhere else. And you've seen some other cognitive um, service example too. And I like cognitive services too because it's really a service where you can leverage with your logic app in, in multiple ways thinkable. Something is like um, sentiment analysis. So this is something where you can leave. So you, you get a lot of tweets in and then you just measure what the sentiment is. Let's say you launch a product and you wanna know in a certain amount of time, what do people feel about your product or something else? Like you put out a service, what's the sentiment around that service? So sample, I'm not gonna show this, it's something I've done with Trump. So 
I built this solution where I collect all the Trump um, tweets, put them into cognitive services, and then use a function to determine what the score would be and put them in the Slack channel. Now, I thought this was funny, but someone told me, like, I think it's Jeff, that they actually use this type of solutions to detect what this president of the United States is saying because of the stock market. So based on the stock market, based on certain sentiments, that the trading on Wall Street could differ a bit about what he's saying. And based on that sentiment, they do some kind of trading as well. So that's, I found that pretty interesting. Although you've probably seen a lot of those Twitter samples in the past, but that's, it does give you a good, good way of, of, of using the, the logic apps for some kind of, of you know, getting in, tap into the social media, because that's fairly easy. So there are use cases around this. So looking at some of those scenarios and flipping back to what you probably know about enterprise application integration, are there perhaps patents um, available? Because patents can also make you more productive and put out a good solutions for your customers. So I've looked at patents too and I thought, yeah, there's some of those enterprise application integration patterns actually right, fit right nicely with uh, logic apps. So one of course being um, route messages based on content, which you can do, because once the message gets in, it gets tokenized, and based on some of the properties, you say, okay, go left, go right, you use switch case, you can loop through it, or there's a kind of controls you could put inside your logic app, so you could route your messages in a certain way. Another is, for instance, aggregator. So logic apps would be able to collect some of the data by pushing out um, requests to certain services or to your APIs, collect all that data and then push it out as a complete message to, for instance, another logic app, which you see in the enterprise integration um, presentation earlier on, where you can chain logic apps together so you can mix and match and do these kinds of stuff. Another one would be splitter. So splitter you could use, for instance, you could do split on within your logic app and then you split your message. You can do batching as you've seen, but you can do all other types of, of the batching of your manage, uh, message. So that means that a splitter pattern is available and applicable to that scenario. And then another one that I really like and that really fits to the logic app, and that's the process manager. Because you could see a logic app being a central unit that does a few steps. So it, you can send off to, for instance, a function, do a calculation, get the result back, send it off to another one, get the result back and send it off to another one, which is some of the use case a product could do with their gym. So that kind of looks like the same thing. So the process manager is an interesting pattern you could use to build your solution. So I've done a, a little bit of a demo around that one. So I built this solution about a week ago and a half an hour because I think, you know, I'm, I'm gonna build something that will measure the sentiment around this conference. So I turned it on last week and what I just do is collect every type of message from a queue, it goes into cognitive services, it will go to a function, I will store that um, message as well in blob, and then I'll feed it into um, a dashboard, so it'll give you an overview of what the sentiment is of integrate 217. So let me switch over to, so this is my logic app. When a tweet is posted, I just want to know the username, I'll detect the sentiment. I'll get some of the key phrases out of it, which I just compose all together instead of looping through them. Then I'll call a function based on what the sentiment analysis gives me as a score. I'll store that um, tweet and I feed it into a Power BI dashboard. So I've got to run here by someone called, this took you crazy. <laughs> right, and is Mr. This took you crazy in the audience? If he is, he probably will not reveal himself, so it's still a secret, but he's out there, and he did put out a tweet. So if I further drill down, let's see what the sentiment is. It's pretty moderate, so that means that it's not good or bad, so if the service cannot determine, based on the text what it is, it usually gives back a moderate, which is 0.5. 
And let's look at some of the key phrases. As you can see, father, bot framework, we treat. Then this goes into the, uh, the function. So I've got that function set up here. Oh. So as you can see, it's just basically some code, which also Jeff Holland showed, serverless uh, kind of paradigm where you can put in some code. Through a logic app, you can call one or many functions. They're contained into a, a logic uh, of into a function app running either a um, <coughs> consumption model or an app model. So they can only be pay as you go, so simple as, a, as your logic app. So you can feed that data into, or at least a score into that function, and then I just put it out here as what you can see here. I just put out these kind of labels. So based on the score, I just label that score with text. So it could be bad, good, moderate, or excellent. And then what I'm getting is this dashboard. So when I started running it, so it's up to 1625, because before I came to um, integrate, so around Saturday, I still had about 50 or 60 tweets, but look how it's building up right now. It's over 1600, and let me do a little refresh, and it's even up a little bit more. And this is something I just built myself. But the guys at Product Group put me, pointing me out as something that there's already a pre-built content pack around Twitter which you could use and leverages some of the services that Azure offers, including a Logic App. So you can build even more fancier dashboard using sentiment analysis, Twitter, etc. What I just built is a little bit more of a homegrown thing, but it was like pretty fast set up. And I didn't want to spend too much time on demos. So going forward, so you just saw me putting a sample in, and it's pretty useful because I could hand this over to Saravana saying, okay, I've done this for you. I've run it like two weeks and this is kind of, you get uptake and then it will go down. And I got all the, the tweets as well. You can do another analysis with it. You can, you know, find, siphon through it and get some of, you know, some of the feedback back right there because that's what you're doing right now. You're just giving feedback constantly for Twitter saying it's a great event, great presentation, etc. If we then move forward, so, okay, this is some of my impression or uh, use case I've used, but what do the customers feel or say through the expert I've talked to? So, some of say it's easy to start with, it's low cost, it's flexible because of that micro peeling model, it's scalable, and you saw the session about scalability, what happens under the cover. Some even feel it's very competitive towards of the competitors like Mule and Del Boomi and such. Other sentiment sometimes is when things don't really work that well, like, okay, did we do the right choice? Instead of using another service or platform, that because things are not moving that smoothly. The other ones feel like, hey, this is really low barrier of entry going into cloud integration. And others feel maybe it should have more enterprise grade features. Then there's some companies out there like there's tons and tons of partners which I talk to that also use Logic Apps building out uh, for their customers. So one has been Fidex, uh, Jason Soros, who's the, uh, the manager, talking to me saying, well, hey, we've got some people working on this. And I find that quite interesting too because if I revert back to a couple of years with Bistock Services, there weren't so many partners building these types of solutions. And I've talked to people like from Team Mexia, uh, Datacom, Fida, uh, people that are in this room, uh, Coded, Motion 10, all those guys, and, and these guys here in the US, and they all have one or more projects around Logic Apps. And I found that an interesting too. I'm like, wait a minute, so there's actually a lot happening in this space comparable to you know, my tour three years ago. So what are my feelings a bit if I look at this service? Well, I do think it's pretty easy when I started this, like, okay, just browser, click, and off I went. And also when I built that solution for that customer, it went pretty, pretty well, went fast. I could build that solution using the capabilities there, so of the connectors and the features and the capabilities that the designer offers to you. It's fast, so you really could say, okay, customer, this is how it was going to work. And you probably have done it too with some of the POCs where you just walk to the customer, oh, this is what you want, and then a couple of minutes later, you just show your solution. It's some of the stuff I've heard too. So you kind of really can deliver value pretty fast to that customer. You have support, so it's through Yammer. 
if I sometimes post stuff, you have, might have the same experience, the ones that leverage and use the service pretty well. Jeff just instantly, or Kevin, they instantly report back saying, oh, what's your subscription? Hey, we'll help you and log into it. So that's really amazing too, that support is really good in this service. There's a lot of tooling around us, which you also see like the OMS portal, for instance, that can really help you out. And what I also like is that it just, you connect anything with everything. So you can really leverage a lot of that Azure services that are out there because it's kind of a, you know, a complete package within the Azure portal or within the Azure platform. So that's something I really great. So you really can deliver the message or the value towards the customer saying, this is what I can do for you quick. There are some concerns too. So it's not like, oh, it's, this is the great story and you know, you've seen a lot and you know, this is all great and are there some concerns and what's a bit of the downside? Well, it's not a downside. There's, there's one misconception though that people think that a logic app is similar to BizTalk or BizTalk Lite with missing functionality and that's not what it is. It's a different service. The other fee, uh, feedback I got from some of the guys was like, hey, this is not a silver bullet. It's not like you can do everything or solve every problem using a logic app. Workload, so that's something I ran into with this customer is that, and it has been told too, that I was straining the uh, CRM system too much that I run into rate limiting issues. And sometimes this can also happen if you choose not, did not choose the right SKU of Azure service you talk to. So for the cognitive services, for instance, when I hammered it with my Trump tweets, I chose the free subscription. And then, of course, that couldn't handle that workload. So then it's got into the rate limiting again. So you have to think about your design too when you look at logic apps, when you're talking to other services too, depending on you know, what kind of um, non-functionals regarding performance, for instance, it, it can handle. The other thing is central management, although that's being worked on. So I was amazed by what John's sending out. Hey, this is what we're going to build for you guys. So this was one of the concerns of the people that I talked to. But, or it's already being addressed. So that also indicates the, the fast pace that they're really running. So even some of those concerns can be gone away. And the other thing is the ALM story. That sometimes it can be a chance to move to the other environments. There's some more concerns. Some around the connectors. Sometimes performance or sometimes it's like, hey, it's not there yet. Like for instance, there's no Oracle or the Oracle connector doesn't support store procedures, but that could be temporarily knowing that these guys would think, oh, wait a minute, oh, we'll fix that, and who knows, it will be there tomorrow. But it sometimes is a concern. But the other thing is, if you think about the design team, sometimes you think maybe I should resolve it in another way, or you could wait a week or two, um, one or two weeks, and then the functionality is there. So that's another thing. And then guidance. So this is someone, uh, some other guy said, hey, but how do I you know, set up my solution? And what's my, you know, how do I do the design? How do I apply patterns? So he's missing some of the guidance. So something probably we have to work together with, uh, with many about it, getting some of that content out as well to give some good guidance. So because I've heard that during my trip in Sweden that people say, yeah, well, you know, how does it fit in generally in the architecture? And you know, where's the guidance? Where can I find it? So in the end, I'm going to round up a bit, uh, is that this service really delivers value when it comes to cloud integration from a SaaS solution to, for instance, another SaaS solution or just a general cloud so integration solution itself. That's where I feel, I think, and got from the feedback I got that it really delivers a lot of value because of less cost and really fast time to market. And it's solving, and it's something Jim said to me so a couple of times as well, it's like it really gives you the ability to solve that business problem first. There's nothing like, oh, I have to set up service, I have to do this. No, you can just log into your browser, have that Azure subscription set up, and then you can start building that solution. So that's really where the value comes into. And this is some of the other quotes I got from, from one that really amplifies that a bit, that you really can do simple cloud-to-cloud -cloud integration with the service, even more complicated as you saw today as well. So what's the road? What's the road ahead? So what I feel in the end that this service, if I also look at some of those analysts, is that this eventually will be a leader in that IPaaS space. I would think it will move up from that corner to that corner. And it will be embraced not just by developers, but also by IT pros. If you look at operations, it can deliver a lot of value too. If you look like a service now, for instance, which is a good example. So that's what I think. And the other thing is that eventually it will be kind of become more and more a commodity for people to use this type of thing.
although there's a distinction between this surface and a flow, which you'll probably hear also tomorrow when I think, Martin, you're gonna do some stuff around it, right? Yeah. So, so that's about it. There's some resources, so there's some YouTube content. Integration Mondays, which does Kent, there's some example scenarios. Um, user voice, definitely look in there. If you're really into this service and you wanna have some stuff in there that's not in there, go there and put your um, stuff out there. They're saying, hey, I'll need this or that. There's blogs. There's even tons of connectors. Um, an overview of there if you're trying to find out which connector is available for, for Logic App. So there's tons and tons of resources out there and there's more and more coming. Okay, so I wanna thank you for listening. Yeah, if you wonder why is that hair on, that's when you work too much with Trump demos that hair can temporarily come back. Although I've got around, I've, I've removed it again, so. Um, I'm gonna be here again for the, next, the, next, uh, the remaining of this conference and tomorrow, so um, great show. Um, thanks also Sarvana, Team Business 360 and all the people involved at Product Group. It's, it's a great uh, event and also you guys, thanks for showing up and staying the three full days of this event, so thank you.